Hello and welcome. Uh, it's been a while since I've uh, done a video, um, but uh, today I want to talk about how to generate genuine excitement uh, for yourself and for others. And I'm going to talk about uh, or relate this topic to the brain a little bit. And I promise I won't get into too much medical details about it, but uh, I, I'm going to talk about it probably in a new way that most people haven't really talked about it. Um, and uh, there are two distinctions I want to present. Uh, the first is um, has to do when you're generating excitement, you you gotta lead people from where they mostly dwell, which is in the past. Sometimes in the present, but very rarely, mostly in the past. You know, most people are dealing with their past, something that happened last week, in the elections, or something that happened in the, for themselves personally, if someone did something to them or said something, or it could be something really good too, it could be great and still in the past, you know, like a past victory that they had and they're still kind of thinking about it, right? Um, and that kind of shapes and, pres and, and, and frames their, their current situation, how they treat it, as well as their future. So part of your job to create excitement for yourself and for other people, you know, of course, you yourself are included in that category of being in the past, uh, is to generate a genuine excitement for the future. So you've got to create something in the future. And so how do you create something in the future? Well, you create, um, you know, the famous philosopher Martin Heidegger said, language is the house of being. Who you're being in the future, in the present, the future, because the present is always moving to the future, is in your language. And your language, what better way to express that than to create language that expresses the future, right? Most people, when you talk to them, don't create language. They don't talk about future. They talk about the present or the past. They talk about what happened or they analyze based on what happened in the past. Now, there's nothing wrong with that except that it doesn't really create something new, right? It's still a repetition or a reframing at best of the past. So how do you create a new feature? Well, you, you express it in terms of what I call a future vision statement. Uh, some people call it a mission statement or a vision statement that expresses who you're gonna be, what the world's gonna look like in the future. For example, my new vision statement is creating a hundred million joyful and successful entrepreneurs by the end of 2027. 2027. Now, um, it's a very simple one, and um, what I advocate is making it very simple, something you can remember, something you feel uh, positive about. Uh, you never want to underestimate the power of what you feel behind what you say because we really are feeling and social animals. So when you feel something, chances are that other people will detect that feeling when you express it. And I'm not trying to be woo-woo, I'm not trying to be Deepak Chopra, I assure you. Uh, and I got nothing against Deepak or, uh, any, or Mr. Chopra or whatever he says. Um, I just want to marry your future vision with concrete reality. It also has to be, and the second point is, has to be some concrete behind it. By concrete, I mean you want to be able to show the steps that you're taking and the strategy and the tactics, in a rough sense at least, um, from taking people from where they're at in the current situation to that future. So, um, uh, you know, the, the, the first distinction of taking people to the future is really what gets instigated in your brain is this wonderful chemical called dopamine that goes off. And whenever people see they're on track for the future, it's something they really want, you know, following tracks on the ground and it's leading to more meat that's going to feed their village, you know, they get excited. You know, that's dopamine. That's a wonderful chemical to have. When you're explaining the steps between where you're at in the present or the past towards going towards the future, how am I going to get 100 million people, entrepreneurs especially, to be joyful and successful, right? Um, so you got to show steps. you got to show or demonstrate some concreteness in what, how you're approaching it. And so you want to show the steps. You want to show the strategy as well of where you want to go. So um, that appeals to your linearity in your brain, uh, in this, well, linearity, but also the ability of the brain to make connections between disparate ideas. So when you present your future where you want to go, you have to show 
the connections in the brain, um, we want to see that the connections between where you're at and where you want to go in the future. So you got to explain that a little bit, not over explain it, but at least be prepared to explain it. So my new vision, like I said, is 100 million joyful and successful entrepreneurs in the world uh, by 2027. And um, I know uh, there's about there's a, there are 400 million entrepreneurs in the world, according to one estimate uh, right now. And uh, by other calculations that I've done, come to the conclusion that at very best, about 52 million of those entrepreneurs are uh, are making it. In other words, they're 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 doing okay, and that's a that's at best. I think it's far less. So there's some work to be done, right? And I think how we can close that gap is through well, one of the strategies is through Meetup, meetup.com, which is a fast-growing platform right now and has the technology to get people to meet live face-to-face. -face. Now, there are other technologies coming on on board as well in the future. In the next five years, our smartphones may be uh, well, extinct um, or, or not that uh, or not cutting-edge uh, technology. There will be more cutting-edge technology that comes out that may take this to another level. However, meetups or meetup.com enables people to meet face to face, which I think is a very good way and it makes it fairly scalable. It currently has about 26.2 thereabouts million people uh, engaged on meetup.com across the world, about 177 countries. So it has the potential to really connect a lot of people who otherwise may not be very connected, including entrepreneurs. So that's one strategy I'm using. It's my selected strategy. We are beginning to do that. We already have about 28,000 members in my connection in the next week uh, my business partner bill is in a uh, conversation with another meetup organizer who has about the same number about another 28,000 members that we're about to to partner with to expand this we are effectively doubling it possibly in the next week but you know if you start with meetups you can create strategic partnerships like that to really exponentiate the whole uh, strategy and so in just what I just shared in the last couple of words, sentences, I'm beginning to show you how that vision can be reality. So my sharing this with you is not to expound just my my vision, which I would certainly want to share, but also to train you in how you can create your own vision and then explain it and pitch it in a way that's intriguing for people. So I hope that helps you. And uh, hey, if you want to participate with me in my vision, of using meetups to increase your audience, build yourself up as an entrepreneur with a good life audience. Come and talk to me, have a quick chat, we can talk, okay? I look forward to sharing more information with you in the near future. Take care and have a great day.